today. I get to dedicate my grandnephew. I know that makes me sound really old. Maybe I am really old. But uh, this is my brother's grandchild. And uh, so Jess and Tori. Child. And their prayer says, God, I want a son. 
And Samuel finds her in the temple, outside of the temple holy place. And she's down on her knees and she's praying and she's praying silently. Incidentally, it's the first time in all of scripture where you see a silent prayer. She's praying silently. Just her lips are moving. And Eli the priest says, if you're going to be drunk, do that at home. Thought she was drunk because she was praying silently. I think Eli would be shocked in churches across America today with all the people praying silently. Amen? She said, it's not that I'm drunk. She says, I'm in great distress. And without ever asking her what her distress was, Eli prays for her and blesses her with a desire of her heart. He didn't even know what she was praying for. And the next year, she has a little baby boy named Samuel. And she doesn't go back to the temple until he is weaned, which would have been somewhere between the age of three and five years old. And she brought him back to present him to the temple. I'm a parent. It would be hard to just take my kid when he's five years old and present him to the temple and say, bye-bye, I'll see you next time there's a festival. Dave's shaking his head. It would hurt, wouldn't it, Dave? I can't imagine what she went through, but she had made a vow to God that she would present him to God. And that's literally what you guys are doing today. You're not going to leave him here. Although I would take him to <laughs> I know he loves my kid. He loves my mom. <laughs> You'll vote for it to say. You heard that. <laughs> Anyhow, what you're doing is giving you back to God. People wonder what happens if he, something would happen tragically and he would pass away. And I'm going to share this with you. The scriptures tell us this that God gathers the little ones into his own arms. Just as simple as that. Jesus taught his disciples that their angels are always beholding the face of the Father. That means that he's got a special place in the eye of God. Until he comes to that age of accountability. So he's got a current place fixed in heaven. Isn't that cool? Good to know. It's good to know. Amen. What we're going to do today is dedicate him to the Lord and you as parents so that you will help him to fulfill his destiny. You see, Samuel, not Samuel, Samson's mom and dad, they were told that they were going to have a child that he was to have a Nazarite vow. And to help that child have that Nazarite vow, they took that Nazarite vow. They didn't have to. They only needed to encourage their child. In the New Testament, John the Baptist was supposed to have a Nazarite vow, and he did. And his mother, Zach, his father Zachariah, and his mother Elizabeth also took that same vow to encourage their son to pursue what God wanted him to do. And this is your charge. You've got to do what God wants you to do. Hey. Uncle Rick is talking here, falling asleep. <laughs> so do you understand that this is really a dedication of the child into the hands of God, but it's also a commitment for you to say, God, we're going to help raise him how you want us to raise him. And to do that, you've got to spend a lot of time in prayer. Prayer to say, God, show us your will, even when God's will crosses your own will. Even when God's will crosses your own will. We all have plans for our kids, but the best plans we can have is those that we find from God. And then surrender ourselves to those plans and encourage our children. Okay? Okay. Oh. While you hold me, I'm going to annoy you. Then I'm going to take you. Oh, good. You're out. In the name of the Father and the Son. Our mighty God, our gracious Heavenly Father, and our blessed Savior, Jesus Christ, who when your own disciples tried to rebuke the people from bringing their children to you to hold and bless, you rebuked them and said, of such is the kingdom of God. And God, we might not understand it in its entirety, but we understand this, God, 
This child is secure in his parents' hands and in their care and in their watching over him. And Father, when we are secure in your care, in your hands, allowing you to watch over us and guide our paths, we have become, as these little children, safe and sheltered in the arms of a mighty God. God, I pray, Lord God, for Lincoln, Matthew, Dave, God, that you'd let your holy hands rest upon him. I pray, Lord, that you'd bless him with abundant health, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that laughter indeed might be a main part of his portion every day, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you'd bless him, Lord God, with strength and with success, Lord God. But I pray especially, Lord, that you would anoint him with your own divine presence, that from an early age he will know the presence of a mighty God, even as Samuel began to recognize the voice of God when you called to him. Might Lincoln recognize that voice when you called to him as well. Let your touch abound upon him, Lord. Quicken his being, Lord God. And multiply his mental facilities, Lord God. And God, let your touch of blessings be with him always. In Jesus' name. Almighty God, I thank you, Lord, for Jesse and for Tori, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, for blessing their home, Lord. Lord, with this new life, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the great excitement in which they had anticipated this birth, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that your blessings would abound upon them, Lord God. And Father, Lord, from this early age, Lord, that this little boy would hear about the works of a mighty God and what Jesus Christ himself does and continues to do and moves among us. I pray, God, that every time he has a spiritual experience, Lord, that they will record it and that they will remind him of it often and that they will celebrate it, Lord God. And Lord, that he will grow in the grace and the spirit of the presence of a mighty God. In Jesus' name. That's three. That doesn't mean that we like her more. <laughs> but there are three aspects that go along with motherhood. Because here's for these little years, you're going to probably be spending the most time with him. So you're his main teacher, his main caregiver, and his main protector. And so remember that. Remember to choose your things easily. Know what you're protecting him. Know what you're giving him care for. And watch over him. And treasure him. And for Lincoln, we've got this, but I'm going to give it to his mommy because he will drop it. <laughs> I think he's a very bad. I'm going to tell you, when I picked that up yesterday, it was all closed up like this. I was real pleased. I said, cool. But between yesterday and right now, it has opened up. And if you know anything about roses, it's not all the way open yet. It's going to open lots more until it just really is a beautiful thing. And like this little light, 
in your house, open up in that same fashion into a beautiful thing. God bless you.